Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing really well. So it's been a little bit since I've filmed and um, we've had lots of snow here actually. We had a snowy Easter and that was kind of disappointing, um, but you can't really do anything about the weather. So I've, I've been outside several times since I uh, saw you guys last, um, but just haven't had a chance to pick up the camera. So I wanted to do that today and bring you guys along with me as I do some more garden cleanup, but some planting of some fun things that I picked up, including a tree. And um, yeah, so I've got a my seventh grader home from school this week. He's sick, poor guy. So I've been taking care of him and homeschooling. And um, I just want to get some good work done in the garden and be out here. And I'm going to be kickstarting my new uh, lawn or flower bed edger that I picked up from from Ace Hardware and seeing how that works. I may or may not film that because I've never used it before and I want to kind of get my bearings with it before I show you guys how it works. Um, we're going to be mowing the lawn today for the first time, turning all the water on. And now that I, I'm fairly hopeful that snow has finally passed for the year, um, but we'll just see, we'll just see. It's been a really weird spring so far. So it is several hours later and I have been out here working on the lawn edge, looking, working on fixing some drip issues. I have to run to Home Depot because I'm all out of connectors to patch up my drip system so I can get it all running normally and get everything watered regularly and consistently. So woo, I'm filthy, covered in dirt. I've got three layers on. I've got dirt all over my hair, all over my face. <laughs> but I'm gonna uh, start showing you guys what I will be planting today. So, or at least getting started on planting today because I'm already wind <laughs> winding down after a few hours. Um, but I found this beautiful silver lace vine and I'm gonna pop a picture of it at maturity. And it says deer resistant, it, grows very vigorously and it will smother things and I thought about um, planting it along my split rail fence. Here's that tray of from Judy's of the Souvenir d'André Chaudron uh, Nepeta which is going to my prairie border and this is the frost damage on it um, from the snow and the cold we've had because these were grown in a greenhouse. This one had been in the garage so you can see that it's fine but these will bounce back. I'm just going to cut back the, the damaged bits and just kind of let it flush. But I do need to get these in the ground. They're better off in the ground. But yeah, kind of sad. We've got some frost damage, but mostly they look okay. Um, and I had a whole bunch more of them in the garage that look really good. So this, these are all going to go out. I've got this Aurora Blue Delphinium and another Abraham Darby Rose, this gorgeous Louise Rowe Clematis, which has blooms on it right now. So I am debating whether I should plant this. I've been keeping it in the garage for about a week. It's got another bloom opening up, or if I should keep it protected and wait until May. Um, and then also, a stunning Stephen Rulo rose. I have one of these already, um, but this will be my second one and I'm gonna find a protected spot for it. But this is one of those beautiful, similar to Coco Loco, that has those gorgeous uh, coffee, dusty tones. And I just love, love the look of this rose so much. This is my variegated lemon tree from the house that is outside right now because I topped up, I fertilized it and I topped up the potting soil, both of which stunk really bad. And everyone, including myself, was like, get it out of the house. It stinks. And so this is the, the tree that I picked up and it is a flowering cherry tree. And it looks like the tag blew off. So I need to try to locate the variety. I will find it and pop it up on the screen, but I'm gonna be replacing one of those magnolias that the deer got with this tree. And the thing is, I've discovered, is that 
I really need to make the investment in large trees. Now, there's a lot to be said for planting small trees because especially like in my windy environment and wherever you plant them, it's, it's a beneficial thing to plant smaller, younger trees because they have more time to establish in your ground and maybe won't um, have a lower chance of shocking. But what I have learned for me is that if I just maybe buy fewer trees or buy them slower and invest in larger trees, I'm not going to lose them to the deer because most of the canopy of the tree is gonna be above their reach. I can always protect the trunk easily like any other tree from them scraping their antlers on it in the winter time. Um, but, and when they have, like I'm gonna show you my Kwanzan cherry tree over here. When they have a, so I planted this one, I wanna say two years ago or a year ago. I've got my pop-up bag over there. I've been working on this edge. Um, and it has put on good growth. And the trunk here now is at least, at least three inches around. And this tree has held up to the wind so well. And that's what's impressed me the most is it's, it is in the windiest possible spot and it is held up so well. So if I find larger trees that have more girth to them, they're gonna be able to hold up more to the wind. The deer, they're gonna be high enough where the deer aren't gonna be able to kill it because yeah, the deer might nibble down here and they do, but they can't get the majority of the canopy of the tree or the blossoms. So, which is kind of a bummer because I have to spend a lot more on trees, but um, you're also buying a lot of time in years. So I also picked up recently these beautiful iron, rusted iron uh, rose supports or plant supports from the Rosarium, which is a local garden center to me. Picked up two of them and I, I already want to go get some more. Got this one supporting my Penelope rose and the other one you saw was supporting my Queen of Sweden rose. The uh, Royal Raindrops multi-trunk crabapple is gonna be blooming here soon. It's leafing out and looking good. And yeah, so update on the edger. It is a steel and I'll put the exact model in the description box, but it is a steel garden edger. We still need to mow the lawn and turn the sprinklers on. But I have have, so it does make a lot quicker work of edging the lawn as opposed to me doing it with that half moon edging shovel, but it is heavy and it, it does take gas and you have to be really careful about being uh, precise. And I'll still have to go back, like in these areas where grass has grown into the border, I'm gonna have to go in with a shovel and dig that out anyway, which I have done already in the back. Now this, at the base of this Kwanzaa cherry tree, the even this high powered edger couldn't get uh, more than a couple like a half an inch, quarter of an inch down into the soil. Whereas in areas where the ground is more soft, it can edge it more cleanly because I have areas where we have granite or it's just super hard pan. Um, and it's, it's frustrating. Um, so all along this area, it was, it was harder where it bakes in the Southern sun. It was harder for the edger to work. And then back here, and harder for it to get like a perfectly smooth line. But back here, I came around and followed up with my little half moon shovel anyway, but it just makes it a lot easier to use. Cleaned it out, pulled out sod that had grown into the border. I actually had to rip up a bunch of the sweet wood rough ground cover because the grass had intermingled into it, but I'm not worried about that. It's so aggressive, it's gonna rebound and I kind of dotted some that I had pulled out in here. And then I moved 
I moved this white English lavender back because it was more about right here and it had all this grass grown into it. So I pulled all the grass out of the root ball. And then there was another one right here, but I couldn't save it because it was just so infested with grass that I, there was just no way for me to pull that apart successfully. I'll also show you guys, these are my ranunculus. I've been pre-sprouting. I have a mixture of uh, regular ranunculus and the butterfly ranunculus. And I'm gonna be planting these out soon as well. So this last tray, I don't know how they're doing because I was informed by the person who sold me these and some of these had uh, green mold all over them when I opened the packages and they told me to wash the corms in a light bleach solution and then plant them. These are the only ones that haven't sprouted. You can see the difference here. Um, but I don't know if they just, they said they might still look, but it, yeah, no. Yeah, see, they're just, uh, looks like they're just further rotting. So I didn't want to mix these together with, and I, they don't see like roots or growth on them. I didn't want to mix them with other kinds in case, that's a bummer. But they did refund me for those and they said, you can just still try to plant them but they definitely don't stand behind the mold. So, but I've got two trays of ranunculus that look happy and are putting on growth. So I will get these planted in the kitchen garden very soon. Well, hello, it is a couple days later and I am just now picking up the camera again. I've been getting some stuff done in the garden. I've been doing some shopping. It is that time of year where I cannot help myself. I tell my husband, that's it. I'm not going to buy any more plants for a while. And he just doesn't, it just, he just doesn't believe me anymore. So sometimes if you find something you've been looking for for a long time in the plant world, you know, you got to just grab it because there's no guarantee when you're going to see it again. So that's always my advice. If you know that you want something and you see it, grab it because you don't know how long it's going to be there. So let's get into some of the things that I have just picked up. So I actually was at Home Depot. So this is a shogetsu. I, I left you guys off. I couldn't remember, or we lost the tag for this flowering cherry tree. This is a shogetsu. It's an RHS award winner. I'll put a picture up on the screen. Beautiful double pale pink to white, bl large blooms. And this one I picked up at Home Depot and was a really good deal because it is it is probably at least 12 feet tall um, maybe out of the canister 10 feet tall but 10 to 12 feet tall really good size and then I found two for um, two more of my very favorite lilacs which is Beauty of Moscow and I have two of these already I want to have a whole hedge of them. I want really well established big plants so that the deer um, don't uh, cut them way back every year because deer do eat my lilacs um, very aggressively. Uh, but once they get going, they're fine. So from every uh, nursery I've talked to locally, they just have not been able to get their hands on a really like a nice four to five foot tall beauty of Moscow lilac. And that's an example for me. Like I saw a local nursery have a four foot tall, full, already gonna bloom lilac of the beauty of Moscow two years ago, one, one to two years ago. And it was a really good price. I left, I didn't grab it. I went back and it was gone. And I think I went back either later that day or the next day. So regrets, garden regrets. But I was able to find two roses that I have been searching for for a really long time um, online from Heirloom Roses. And I ordered those and those will be coming in May. Um, but another garden win, I found the crab apple that I have been searching for for three years, three plus years. 
uh, I think uh, Aaron Benzikane from Florette talked about it a few years ago, and I knew that I had to have it, and I want a few of them, um, but I found it at a local, very random, I can't believe I found it there, place after calling all the local nurseries, they didn't have it, and, um, but I found it at a very off-beaten place you wouldn't expect to find uh, such, such a tree. Um, and I'm not going to be sharing that location because I might go back and buy the rest of them. Um, but it is the Everest crabapple tree. And it gets these pale, like, I'm going to pop up a photo on the screen. But it gets these pale pink, beautiful pink buds and then opens to these beautiful white blooms. It's a nice small size. It only gets about 15 feet tall. And if you remember me saying last time, I only wanted to buy trees that were more established because the deer eat them. I'm gonna keep this because it's gonna be so prized for me. I'm gonna keep this in a container. Obviously the, the uh, place that had this got a bare root and it's just, it's not even well rooted into its pot, but I'm gonna put it into a large container and keep it in my fenced in kitchen garden until it gets too big for its pot and then I'm going to plant it out in my backyard. That's my tentative plan. And then the other thing is I got a bare root rose from Menagerie one or two days ago and I need to open it and I need to pre-soak the rose. Um, so I've got to clean up this flower bed beside my, beside my driveway here. It's still, this is like one of the last areas of the garden that need to be pruned and raked and weeded for the spring and, and fertilized and all that. I've got to tackle it. But I want to show you this as an example, this lilac here. This is, I've had this here for three or four years. I think four years actually. This was like a little start from Home Depot. Don't remember the variety, but the deer have always eaten it down every year. Um, but that one we had, we didn't have water here to it for the first year or two. So see, look all this, all this uh, brambles that have blown in here from the wind. But here's another one that was from Home Depot, bought at the same time. It's a different variety. It's done better. But you know, at this point in time, after being in the ground for four years, it should be taller than it is, but the deer always eat it down. Luckily, prairie has seemed to be doing a fairly decent job of keeping the deer out of, like my tulips are okay, everything's pretty much okay. This, this will be the, here's another one. This is another variety, I can't remember, but you can see, look, deer damage, but this will be the first year that it blooms, as long as the deer don't get to this. I will get to see this bloom and then hopefully re-identify what variety it is. But I have to go through and assess damage in here, prune my hydrangeas and the roses. And then I've got, it looks like, oh, it's not gone, but it is not well. There's new life on here. This is French lace. And I was a little concerned with how it would do in our climate and it doesn't look like it did very well over the winter. But um, yeah, this is another, so this is a beauty of Moscow lilac that I planted last year. And you can see the deer have eaten all of these tips, but we've got some, you know, growth this year, but I just gotta, it's, it's on the drip. I'm gonna fertilize it, keep it alive. And I just know that in four or five years, these will be tall enough and blooming that, you know, whatever the deer are going to do to it, it's not going to kill it or I'm not going to lose all the blooms. But it's just that investment of time. That's why I want to find these varieties that are nice and big. And then I thought this was another beauty of Moscow, but it is not. It is this variety, um, a nice pale, typical, oh, 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 yes. I bought this last year at the Rosarium and you can't really tell on the photo, but it's a beautiful pale lilac, lab, uh, 
pale lilac, lilac, but the leaves are variegated. So it was really beautiful. I saw it and as the weather warms up, the leaves go more solid green, but in the springtime when it's cool, they are variegated. So I picked that one up because I thought the foliage was beautiful as well as the blooms. So here I will pop the name on the screen of the name of this viburnum, but it is a very early flowering viburnum, pink blooms, lovely smell. Uh, I got this last year. So lots of cleanup to do over here, obviously. Lots of, uh, lots of stuff blown in from windstorms. All of these tumbleweeds, just tumbleweeds everywhere. So, but we've got lots of like Korean spice viburnums and things in here. This, I've talked about this before, but this is my, my shrub bed. And I always wanted to have lilacs all the way up my driveway and viburnum all the way up my driveway and maybe put an ornamental tree in here or two. We have plans for this scotch pine tree, which there was a large semi truck. I'm, and I'm talking it with a huge bed that was carrying heavy, heavy uh, road equipment on it for pouring asphalt who were pouring asphalt for one of our neighbors down the road. And for some reason, they decided it was a good idea instead of using this turnaround to back up into our driveway and they backed up. And this, at the time, our, our driveway was only a year old. So we had just paid all that money for a asphalt driveway and they rammed into this tree. And so since then, the roots from this tree getting hit have come and cracked all the way across our driveway. Anyway, so we want to have this taken down this year, if at all possible. We've got the guy who already gave us a bid to come do it. He's going to chip all of the, uh, all the pieces and broadcast it as mulch. So we're going to keep all of that good material from the tree because it's not diseased or anything. It's, it's just kind of in a vulnerable position now. And it was supposed to be actually taken down when we were building and we had put an X on it and said multiple times to our excavators to knock it down and it just got, kept getting missed. So we want to get rid of it and, and have mirroring maple trees on either side of the driveway and you can see where we had tried to plant them before. We had two, I think they were October Glory uh, maple trees and either that or red sunset and we, there was no irrigation up here at the time and we don't have water nearby and they just didn't make it. We had a really hot summer and I couldn't get up here enough to hand water them as much as they needed. So lessons learned. Okay so I've got my box here from Menagerie Roses. My sister had given me a gift card to get a rose and I had already finished my bare root order for the year from David Austin but I couldn't miss the opportunity. I missed her initial stock. They sold out before I got on but she always has such good healthy roses. So let's see. I wanted to get another honey Dijon for my garden and this one looks really nice. I, you know, she's one of the, I think my experience with her bare roots are, they're some of the, the, the healthiest, nicest bare roots that I've found online. I have a few honey Dijons already. I think some of them were own root little one year old roses. Some of them have been bare root. And um, it's been one of the varieties that is a little bit tender here where I live and I get dieback on it. So I'm going to pot or plant this one in the most protected place that I can put it and um, see how it does. I would like, so I initially had all of my honey Dijons planted in one area on the south border of my garden and it is the windiest spot, the most exposed spot. And I think that because this is more tender, that's just asking a lot for it to thrive in those conditions. So 
I'm going to be moving it to a more protected spot in the front border, but looks really, really good. So I'm going to pre-soak this. We don't want to let it, the roots dry out at all. And I'm going to pre-soak it for at least two hours. I probably won't plant this until this evening. But again, this is a grafted rose. So I'm going to be wanting to bury the graft point uh, about an inch under the soil. Last year I planted my Honey Dijon grafts really deep and I think almost too deep and it failed to kind of get going. I actually, actually lifted it and planted it a little bit higher and then it started shooting up and doing well. So I think you have to find that right balance between uh, too deep and too shallow and it totally depends on where you live. So, um, you know, I know all of my gardeners down in the south or in warmer climates, they don't bury their graft point because um, there's more risk of reversion to the rootstock where you live. But for us, with our cold, cold winters, we need to protect that graft union. So anyway, let's get this soaked. And while we're at it, I've got the rest of my David Austins here potted up, waiting for their final homes, but starting to put on buds. This guy's got some buds. This is James Galway, Lady of the Lake. Emily Bronte, which is putting on, which is putting on some buds. Same, who else do we have? Oh, the Wedgwood Primer. Gener this is um, another generous gardener I have, and then Olivia Rose Austin, which is putting on little buds too, but she needs to be buried deeper and in the ground. So I'm going to put them in the ground soon. This is a rose I've had in the pot since January, um, and it is a David Austin that has been harder to find for me, and it's called Rosemary. And I will pop a photo up on, on the screen, but really look like it opens like a very pale, 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 soft pink, and then they become white blooms. And um, yeah, here is a Stephen Rulo. So sweet pea update, not much to see yet because it has been so snowy and so cold. This is the first day that actually feels like spring. But we have, we have signs of life. Can you see? All down the row, sweet peas are starting to come up. So they'll just be a little bit slower. And I'm, I was panicking a little bit. Cause I'm like, man, they're taking a long time to germinate. But I have to remind myself that if all goes as I hope it to go, they, they will be tougher and hopefully last longer into the summer and bloom better this way for me in my particular climate. More over here coming up. You can see all the way down the line, they're starting to sprout up. And then also all this beautiful new growth on my, one of my favorite clematis, the Betty Corning. And tulips, tulips galore coming up in my beds. So this border has been cleaned up since you saw it last. All of these beautiful Casada daffodils are in bloom. It's been weeded in here. And we've got our beehives down here, which my husband is actually going to be picking up our nukes today. I was saying my husband actually has been a beekeeper since he was a teenage boy and he was a very much like an inner city kid uh, from Los Angeles and he moved up to Spokane when he was um, I think in third or fourth grade and uh, when he got into high school he just became enamored with honeybees and read the beekeepers bible which beekeepers know um, that's a very thick book, uh, but it's kind of like the standard for uh, beekeeping, among other books that he read and started keeping bees and just did, he just has a knack for them. And we got bees, like when we found this property, I was like, you know, honey, we, I call him honey, 
we've got to name this property Honey Hill because we know we're always going to have bees for you. And uh, we got bees the first year, the first two years, and we had a bear get into our bees and eat. Actually, they ate all, almost all of the bees and what was left, they died. And we had the hives way further down the mountain from our house. And so uh, we, we don't want to do that again. We want to keep them much closer to the house. And uh, yeah, so we've got his highs back out and he's going to be polishing up their copper tops here this weekend and uh, getting, getting our new girls set up. So we will be so excited to have honey and bees once again at, at Honey Hill. Okay, so I'm over on the south border of my garden and this is where I had a huge stand of Shirley poppies last year that had self-sown and this area was severely disrupted by our dog last or the, over this winter and dug up in several places so disrupted all the seed and I do not have I used to I had a carpet last year at this time of the year of Shirley poppies and I have very sparse so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread some compost and ideally I would have done this two months ago <laughs> Um, but that just happens sometimes with life. So I'm going to be spreading some compost. I'm going to be spreading some Shirley Poppy Amazing Gray seeds over this area and hope that I see some blooms later on this summer. These are Shirley Poppy seedlings that self-sowed and amongst little grass spreading around must be weeded out. But I used to have, or last year there was a carpet of these all over this area and for whatever, for you know the dog and for other reasons they just didn't spread that way this year and I kind of was hoping that they would. There's a bigger one right there, seedling. Some more. So there's definitely, they're dotted through here. They're just not thick like last year. So I have to weed it all again. What is it? A little and often with weeding. A little and often. And here's a nice patch of them in the back of the border that should get really nice and big this year. But little babies in here so they're in here amongst weeds but yeah some more in the back just around so it's been a couple hours and I've been working in this border by my driveway which I like to call my shrub border and I got everything pruned back I did a lot of weeding and raking and picking up pine cones I feel like I made some really good progress on the majority of the weeds in here, but I'll just have to keep on top of it. It will need to be remulched, and then, like I said earlier, when we take down this tree and plant a tree, we're going to extend the cardboard base and a big thick layer of mulch, so it will basically look like a continuous flower bed to the edge of our road. But this viburnum in the light is so pretty. I don't know if it reads on camera, but it really is so beautiful. What do we have in here? We have some spice coffee roses, which I transplanted from another area of the garden over here this spring. 
So behind these spiced coffee roses, there's strawberry shake hydrangea, there's an Abraham Darby rose, there's a Marc Chagall rose, there is a Korean spice viburnum, there is a, I believe, a, va a vanilla, so two vanilla strawberry hydrangeas, one here and one here. There is a smoke bush back there, which the deer keep eating, and then those Beauty of Moscow lilacs, one there, one there, and then that third variegated variety of lilac over there. I have alliums and da daffodils. I had miniature daffodils like tete -a tete that's gone over down here. I've cut back all the lavender. So I had originally planted lavender all the way up and these are, you know, they were different varieties and these are the varieties that survived. And the ones that I planted all the way to the top were from Home Depot and the ones that have survived are from a local lavender farm. So I'm going to go buy more from her this year. She has starts again uh, and just because I know that they perform better in our climate. And then I have a ginger wine nine bark which is planted too close to this lilac. So that will probably be, need to be moved back um, or the lilac will be, be, need to be moved one or the other. Um, I have two Moonlight in Paris roses, another lilac, and in the back I have a Q Rambler rose. And it's an old David Austin Rambler. I have another Korean Spice Viburnum. I have another Q Rambler rose. I have another little lilac. I have a Spice Baby Viburnum, which stays smaller. Oh, and this is a Queen of Elegance rose. And this is a Jubilee celebration from David Austin. Um, and then I have a Black Lace Elderberry, which I wanted to get nice and big in this corner. I think that somewhere along here, maybe back behind this lilac, I want to plant some type of ornamental tree um, and then move this ginger wine nine bark to another spot. But maybe I'll move the ginger wine nine bark up here somewhere where there's a lot more room. But it's hard to remember how big these things get when they're so small and it will take years for them to establish. But it's definitely looking better. We've got Eve up in our little cul-de-sac trying to ride her bike. And we've got the prairie border, which needs to be taken care of. But we've got some daffodils blooming out here. This is gonna be my, this is my big project. This whole border is going to be a, probably a two year project. So that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was hodgepodge and a little bit all over the place this time, um, but that's just kind of how life has been at the moment. Um, but I have something very exciting I'm gonna be filming next week that I am a little adventure, a little road trip um, that my husband and I are going to go on and it involves plants and I'm going to be filming it and I'll have something very special to share with you guys. Um, if not next week, next weekend, the following weekend. So yeah, I hope you guys are doing really well and happy gardening. Bye.